that and it's time to do the February wrap up. So for being the shortest month of the year, I watched and read a ton of things and most of them were so so good so I cannot wait to talk about all of them with you. And let's start with movies. I started the month by watching Malcolm and Marie. I was super excited to watch this because Zendaya was in it and I love her so so much. And this is one of those movies that is... It has everything to be an Oscar movie. It's very uh, monologue heavy. It's shot in black and white. So it's one of those artsy kind of movies, but it's so good. I absolutely loved it. And this is not at all a love story, especially because the title suggests that it is. This is not a love story, but it is a story about love. And this movie does such a great job at discussing little things that people bottle up when they are in a relationship and the performances were incredible highly recommended because it was so good then i watched the photograph and i don't have much to say about this movie it was just okay for me i was expecting it to be more of a romantic comedy and it ended up not really being that so yeah it's a movie that i watched <laughs> Let's move on to the other one that I watched and this was one of my most anticipated releases for this year and that is to all the boys always and forever. I love the I loved the book trilogy so so much and I love the movies so so much as well. This is like candy in a movie. It's so sweet. The characters are so adorable. I was a little scared that I would watch this and I would cry. So I started watching it, kind of containing myself so that I wouldn't, but it didn't work. I cried so many times while watching this movie. It was such a good adaptation. And I feel like this was, this did some things even better than the book. Because in the book, we have a lot of miscommunication between Peter and Lara Jean. And here, the relationship and the communication feels so much better and so much healthier. They, they have a better balance when they are talking about things. This was the perfect ending. Next up, I watched Sense and Sensibility. And this will make sense when you see the books that I read, but I read the book finally this month and then I wanted to watch the movie adaptation with Emma Thompson and Alan Rickman and a ton of different actors very well-known actors. Um, I have to say that, once again, comparing the book to the movie, I enjoyed the movie more because the book, for some reason, felt a little dry. The movie was funnier. That being said, once again, it was just okay. I didn't really vibe with the story to begin with, so the movie was just okay. It was fun to see, but yeah. And finally, the last movie I watched was such... A disappointment and that was four weddings and a funeral if you are at all interested in movies and romantic comedy classics this is one of those like the typical English romance movie that everybody raves about like Notting Hill now I've watched Notting Hill many many years ago really enjoy that one and I'm a huge fan of Hugh Grant so this was on my to be watched list for a very long time finally decided to watch it and I was so disappointed this movie was a mess there was something missing about these characters um, I can't explain it any better than we were missing information like these characters didn't feel real there was nothing special and nothing that made them feel like individuals. I really did not vibe with this and I was very disappointed. Now for TV shows, I rewatched season one of The Vampire Diaries. I decided with my best friend, same thing we did with Gossip Girl, we are planning to rewatch The Vampire Diaries. I think when I first saw it, like way back in high school, I I think I got to season four. We never actually finished the TV show and now we are on a mission to do so. And this is one of my favorite shows, especially because of nostalgic reasons. I just, I love Elena. I love, love, love 
Damon. I think he's such an incredible character. From what I remember, I think either season two or season three is my favorite, so I'm really excited to continue on and then like rewatch everything and feel everything again because I remember crying so much when I watched this the first time. That's it for TV shows, and now let's move on to the books. And to be completely honest, I didn't plan to read so much and I can't really explain how I read so much, but it happened, I did. So let's get into it. The first book that I finished in February was Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jake Kristoff and I loved it so much. I cannot explain to you how compelling this was to read. I loved Illuminate, the first book in the Illuminate Files trilogy, but this book was even a step above that. Illuminate was very compelling, very mysterious, and the way that it is told through mixed media makes you want to read on. This was even better. I loved the character so much. The plot was so interesting. I loved everything about it. And now I am ready for Obsidio, I think it's what it's called, the last book in this trilogy. I have ordered it. It's coming in the mail. This was so good. This is sci-fi. Um, we are in ships. There is this big company that has been doing some shady business and now we have a group of teenagers, young adults, that are trying to understand what is happening and trying to take this company down. Oh, this is so good. This is, that is the broadest uh, explanation that I can give it. But this is so good. Next up, I read some nonfiction, and that is Funny Weather, Art in an Emergency by Olivia Lang. And I was very surprised by this book. So the best way that I can explain this is a bit of biographies on a ton of different artists and some essays about art and some other subjects. And when I got this book, I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. I love the way Olivia Ling writes. This is the first book of hers that I've ever read. I think I'll have to check out her other works because this was such a good match for me. Next up is a favorite, and I was not counting on it being a favorite. And that is Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. <sighs> this book was so... Good. So this is romance. Our main characters are Mac and Liv. Liv works at a restaurant, but her boss is caught doing some very inappropriate stuff and Liv quits because of that. Uh, this deals with sexual assault, especially in the workplace, sexual harassment, and Liv is on a mission to kind of uh, expose him, her boss. And Mac kind of helps her with it. And obviously while they are trying to figure out what, what they can do to bring him down, their relationship kind of sparks and evolves. What I felt with Take a Hint, Danny Brown, was so similar to what I felt with this. I loved how the characters got to know each other little by little. I love the progression of the relationship. Another thing is that this is enemies to lovers, even though that is not my favorite trope. It worked very well here because their animosity was believable and that is the most important thing. <sighs> this was great, this was funny, this was adorable and the relationship was so sweet. Next up, I read Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant and I listened to this on audiobook and it was so good. This is contemporary, YA contemporary romance very very sweet we have tessa who is our main character she has recently been accepted to this very prestigious writing program and she loves to write romance stories but once she is accepted into this program the words kind of disappear she isn't able to write anymore so this is a story of her trying <laughs> with the help of a couple of friends to get her words back and to find some real life romance so that it can inspire her writing and this book was so adorable first of all the audiobook was great i loved the narrator and even though you can predict everything you can see the tropes and where the story is going 
but still the execution is so good i loved it the characters are so sweet once again highly recommend that you pick this up then i read another favorite and this once again was very much a surprise this is a cuban girl's guide to tea and tomorrow by laura taylor namey and i was not expecting to love this as much as i did so this tells the story of lila reyes she is cuban american and she's going through a very tough time in life her grandmother just died her boyfriend and her broke up recently her best friend isn't talking to her at the moment so everything feels like is coming down around her and her family is very worried because she isn't dealing with things properly and in a good way. So they decide that the best thing for her is to take a step back and go away for the summer. So she has family in England and that's where she goes. And this book is her, Leela, dealing with everything, dealing with growing up, finding out who she is, who she wants to be, her dreams, her roots, dealing with grief, a lot of that. And this book was so beautiful. First of all, the writing, is stunning. If you love With a Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, read this one because you will love it just as much. Next up we have another fantasy and do not be surprised that I will be raving about pretty much all the books that I read because it was that kind of month where everything I read was incredible. Legend Born by Tracy Dion is amazing. Read it, pick it up. This was such a breath of fresh air. This is urban fantasy. We have our main character Brie and she just lost her mother. She's going once again through a very tough time in her life but at the same time she has been accepted to this special early college program where she gets to go to college early because she's such a good student and she does that and there she finds secret societies and she discovers that magic is real so that is the starting point for everything. This book is inspired by the legend of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. I had never read anything based on that before and I loved it so so much. The writing in this book is amazing, incredible. The way that the characters are developed just makes you want to read more and more. And on top of everything, the world building in this book is something that I haven't seen in a while. Everything feels so believable, so realistic. There's an explanation for everything. It makes so much sense. And that I have to say was probably my favorite part of this whole thing. I've said this before in my last video and I'll say it again here. This gave me so many City of Bones vibes. When I was reading it, you have so many things to fall in love with in this story that I can't recommend this enough. I think this will be a duology and I am so hyped to see where the story is going. And now for a bit of nonfiction once again we have Twisted, The Tangled History of Black Hair Culture by Emma Dabry and this book is so good. First of all, go pick it up, go read it because not only is it incredible but it's another one of those books that is incredibly necessary and everybody should read. I would have to say that in terms of importance, I would put this right up there with hood feminism. The thing I love the most about this book was how the author was able to put the present and the past together. How certain things may not seem connected at first glance, but are. And especially, and this is very much a white person situation, how much we are conditioned throughout our whole lives to think of Africa in a certain light that is not actually true. And all of this obviously comes with colonialism, the way that we had to put Africa down in order to justify the way we were exploring it. And this book does such an incredible job at showing that. Another thing, and especially nowadays we talk so much about cultural appropriation and everything that comes with it, this book talks about that at length, especially when it comes to hair. And I found it so eye-opening how hair connects with so many different aspects of life, how hair is so important and has been so important. So the fact that sometimes we want to uh, make light of it and we have this ability to, oh, it's not that deep. It is that deep. And this book 
tells the story of how and why it is so. This is not at all long and there's so much information packed in this that I can't recommend it enough. Next up we have a reread and that is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. I just needed to reread this one so that I was completely ready for A Court of Silver Flames. I still haven't read it because it still hasn't come in the mail but I am so ready. I have read and heard so many amazing reviews and I know I will love it because I love Cassian and I absolutely love Nesta. I am so invested in her story and in seeing where this is going that I'm, I'm, I'm so ready and the little bit of them that we get in this book has me so hyped for that. Here, I feel like a lot of people didn't enjoy this one, especially because when it was announced, people were thinking that this wasn't going to be a novella, that this was going to be a huge book, like the other ones in the series. But I am a fan of this, so I loved it. <laughs> I'm a fan of low stakes, nothing is happening, we just see the characters having fun kind of stories. So this was right up my alley, like literally, nothing happened in this book we just got to see more of the characters and seeing the characters interact with each other and just being themselves without having to save the world so that is why i love this then i read a graphic novel and that is sheets by brenna thumler and this was very cute though nothing special this deals with a young girl and her family they're going through a very hard time she just lost her mother and the family owns a laundromat so not only are they dealing with the grief of losing a parent but they're also dealing with this guy who kind of wants to take the laundromat for them and is trying to sabotage their business and then on another note we have this little ghost who happens to go to the laundromat it didn't do a lot for me but it was fun then we have this book and I don't really know what to say about it. This is The Death of Francis Bacon by Max Porter. This was one of my most anticipated books of the year. And I don't really know what to say about it because I don't understand. I read this in an afternoon. I love Max Porter's writing. I've read all of his books up until this point. And even though he is a bit unorthodox, let's put it like that, he's a little experimental with his writing. I feel like this was too far. <laughs> I don't understand what the point of this book was. I didn't understand a single thing that was happening. This feels like a fever dream and I don't understand any of it. I'm really sad about it because I was expecting at least for this to make sense, even though it was experimental to begin with, the premise. Oh, but this was a mess. A mess I did not enjoy this at all but let's move on to a book I adored and that is Girl Woman Other by Bernardine Evaristo this book was incredible it took me a month to read but I loved every second of it even though this is a novel this feels like a short story collection to me because each chapter we see from a different person's perspective and these characters are kind of grouped together by families and you see through different generations different types of people who have different um, goals in life who have different experiences and this book was fascinating this is set in Britain we see the perspective of people who live there either people who were born there or immigrated there. This focuses on black stories, black people. The way that the author was able to explore such different characters with uh, so many different ideologies, different ways to see the world, it was so compelling. You already know by this point that I love character focused stories and this was that. This was just people living and I loved it. Next up, I read Miracle Creek by Angie Kim and I enjoyed this book a lot. This is a bit outside my comfort zone. It's more of a mystery. This is a court drama, but I really enjoyed it. So if you have any more recommendations similar to this, let me know in the comments because I don't know of any books similar to this and especially with this setting. In this book, we follow a, a cast of different characters and what is happening is that something happened, a fire happened, and we are seeing the trial for that. We are trying to put the pieces together, understand what happened, 
while also being at the trial of who we think probably did it. And it's fascinating watching everything come together, putting the pieces together, analyzing the characters once again. I love uh, lawyer-esque situations. I love how to get away with murder. And one of the lawyers here really reminded me of Annalise Keating, which I loved. This talks a lot about immigration. It deals with people on the autism spectrum. This book felt very human. We don't see from any people with autism in this book. We see from their families. Just because I felt this was a little bit heavy on the mystery side and that is not a preference of mine this isn't like a favorite or anything but i really enjoyed it and this is one of those that i could definitely see being an incredible movie two more books to go i read a fall love story by Long Lee, and i read this as an audiobook once again i love this one so much this talks about rival families they have different fall restaurants and the teenage uh, kids from these families don't really get along because of the rivalry between their families but one day they kind of strike up a conversation and they get friendly with each other and then stuff ensues and it's YA romance contemporary it's very very cute the way that it combined the romance aspect but also the family aspect was so well done I love the dynamic the characters had not only with each other but with their families. And I highly recommend this book. Once again, highly recommend the audiobook because we have dual POV and we have different actors for each uh, main character. It worked so well, it was so good. The one thing I have to say about this book is that the ending felt a little bit rushed because of the family things that we have to deal with. The ending felt like uh, we were trying to solve things too quickly and that's the only thing that I have to say about it because other than that, it was great. And finally, this this video is huge, isn't it? Finally, I read Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Like I mentioned before with the movie, this felt a little dry. Of all the Jane Austen novels that I've read so far, Pride and Prejudice is at the top, then Sense and Sensibility, and low very very low is Northanger Abbey. I really didn't enjoy that story. This felt uh, like a lesser more boring version of Pride and Prejudice because the characters were more compelling than Northanger Abbey for example and we, we have a kind of le we have lessons to learn here like we have in Pride and Prejudice but the story was a little meh for me so this deals with two sisters their father just died and because of the whole like thing of the time with uh inheritance and stuff like that they don't get what they should after their father's death so both sisters or there are three sisters but we focus more on two of them and their mother have to move somewhere else then there's romance a lot so much miscommunication in this book. I know this is a thing of the time. There's a lot of etiquette and social norms to uphold. Oh, but there, this was ridiculous. So Pride and Prejudice still has my heart. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you've read any of the books, if you watched any of the things that I mentioned today, what was your favorite of the month? Let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.